So I recently just made the Feather Sword Guide and I said these things fall off. And in a way, they kind of do. But I was bored, all right? And I wanted to figure out a way to make these things as aggressive as possible and also leverage either lowly contested things or in some cases highly contested things and just generally random classes just to see what I could come up with. And here is the result. This is the team. So this is going to be one of the dumber teams you've seen, I can imagine. However, it's actually reasonably effective. Now, it does require that you do quite a bit. So this is a hard carry team, and it demands things from you. I used illusions times five on both of the angels, <laughs> and I think illusion times three on this, and then I also gave it max strength. Or maybe this one didn't get buffed at all. Uh, these definitely got at least four illusions each. So all of these have damage increase and just like stat increase and stuff. All right, so first of all, let's go over like what this team does. Uh, so it's a Griffin Cleave that gets wing line standard from the back. And we did bring a Vanguard into the mix and it's actually very useful and you'll see why pretty soon. Uh, but essentially what we're doing is we're going for uh, Aerial Smite Nuke off of the back of Wingline Standard. So first, let's break down like what happens. All right, so Wingline Standard grants row of allies buffs based on number of flying targets. So if there's three, you get all the buffs. You get 20% crits, 20% or 20 more accuracy, and 20% more attack, which boosts all of your damage. So it just boosts the entire front line, makes them have higher crit rate, more damage, and more accuracy. And it happens at the start of battle. So you cannot have competing start of battle effects and if you have things that typically are hard carries that you start of battle effect, you do not run them in this team. This is a team that allows you to leverage typically A or B tier classes and allows you to win most matchups, if not all matchups. Uh, all right, and it also has redundant damage, which we'll get into in a second. All right, so we use the start of battle effect. We boost these. This thing goes for a huge cleave. Um, it also has... Uh, Dirty's Gambler or Dirty Gambler coin used on it and when it does that it uses aerial wing gives itself a true attack if it's at max HP it gets plus 20% more attack I uh, can go for crits now it's on lucky coin for partial crits I don't have amber lens available for like to this thing I'd also tailwinds the front to make them go faster so typically you cleave the front row with huge damage increase from this wing line standard from the dirty, the dirty Gambler coin. So Dirty Gambler coin gives you plus 30% attack, plus 20% attack from Wingline Standard, 20% more crit rate, 50% uh, more crit damage, and then the accuracy debuff doesn't matter because you're making it a true strike. So you're plus 70 attack, true strike, uh, plus 20 crit, putting this at 59 crit rate, and you're plus 50 crit damage as well, plus 50% crit damage. So typically whatever you hit is dying, basically. And then you tailwind. All right, so that's and so you basically will kill the front row. And also, before you hit the front row, we defensive curse them. <laughs> so they're they have they have half physical and magical defense. And the thing we really care about is the minus uh, physical defense, right? Uh, defensive curse's description is bugged. It actually reduces their defense, even though it says attack. Uh, all right, so you cleave the front line, and then you tailwind both of these things which also have wide pursuit <laughs> for no reason <laughs> they just have wide pursuit and what these do is they honed slash now they have a buff now so it's a true strike so they have their gambler coin hone slash with plus 20 crit rates so they're looking at like 40 crit each and when they do honed slash it's a three hit attack typically one to two of the hits will crit and you also have a huge damage bonus from the uh, wing line standard and then from the dirty gambler coin so you just deal a ton of damage and then we have two we have forged weapons so we have a forged heaven sword for accuracy and evasion uh, we also have hunter's buckler for follow-up damage on the wide pursuit we have outlaws uh, bracelets for wide pursuit we have dream crown which is obtained through treasure maps in Angel Lands, and then we also have Ancient Crown, which is obtained through treasure maps in Furry Lands. 
Uh, we also use uh, King's Blade Cornix for increased stats. So this is just the highest damage you can squeeze out of a weapon. It's basically 30 damage like, instead of 25. Uh, and then we have Heaven Wings, Heaven, Heaven Swing, Heaven's Wing Shield Plus. So it's forged, so it has better stats, but it gives you accuracy and evasion. So both of them have accuracy, evasion plus 10. They both have a crown. Uh, one has stats plus 10, one has stats plus five. This one has better follow-up damage. Uh, this debuffs things, Dirty Gambler coin. And then also you might have noticed this guy has large aid kit. So after you kill things, or if you take chip damage, you pop this to heal. And also you might have noticed that my party leader is a character that does this, take less damage from range assists, and has 100 mobility. So Virginia originally was in here, but she does not have 100 mobility, she has 80. So he's actually a little bit faster, and you can of course switch to one of the flyers and then speed boost yourself with Valor skill from the Griffin if you really want to. Uh, but you can also just stick this guy on a road, speed boost, and he's zooming, so I will demo that. Where should I start? So let's get him zooming. <laughs> so stupid. But, you, but here's why, though. These flyers, if they eat too much range assist, will die easily. Your damage output is flyer-based, so if there's a ton of range assist, that is the thing that hard counters you. And look at this. Now we're anti-magic assist, if I, if I were to switch this before battle. Take less damage from magic assist, take less damage from range assist. Uh, heals at the end of battle. Also, he can use uh, arrow cover as needed, but typically you kill things before you need it. So let's start fighting things so you can see, get a feel for how this this uh, build works. It's a pretty fun build. All right, he's chasing him down. You can, of course, AoE buff the Valor skills, but I wanted to get the crit damage to be as high as possible. And even just Dirty Gambler coin gives you a buff and a, a true strike. So that actually makes their single target hit almost guaranteed kill. All right, so here comes the board sweep or the row attack. This is only a, a four group. It doesn't have five for some reason. And the wide inspiration hits these. If <laughs> Look at the damage on it. <laughs> All right, that hone side. Look at that. Now we have them one rounding immediately after the uh, also the enemies are level like 38 to 40 here so they're not over leveled we're also making use i think this is an interesting team we're making use of some weird classes here no one really runs vanguard that i've seen and obviously some people use druid uh i don't know that you need this i like this for the initiative uh but this particular build it has some pretty crazy items, like Dream Crown. Now, you could drop Ancient Crown and Dream Crown, Dream Crown, you'll probably still be fine. And honestly, I think the, the Pursuit is completely redundant and you do not need it. I just have it because it's fun. So you can drop the Pursuit gimmick. Look at the damage they deal with these. It's because of the Griffin Cleave on the horses. The Griffin Cleave, when it crits horses, does absurd damage. It'll overkill them, but it's just cool to watch, to watch the damage numbers get insane. Alright, so we made Feather Sword at least decent. It's at least in B tier. With a build like this. Now, could you just cleave, row cleave with a second Griffin? Probably. <laughs> to be honest. You probably just row cleave. So, look at that damage though. They're, I'm so proud of them. They're popping off now. They're actually one rounding like they're supposed to. Look how many excess resources we have. So originally I actually had an Elven Archer in this team. And the, El the point of the Elven Archer was to confer the cleave, but it was redundant damage. But most importantly, when you party aid, it heals the Elven Archer, which then heals a second time. So if you take any spam damage, it just un it undoes it. Uh, but we can look at all the matchups here. Uh, this group we don't kill. Uh, they probably cleanse the debuff, the defensive debuff. They have plus 50% debuff or uh, defense in the garrison. This group we kill, this group we kill. This group we don't because they blind us. If I equip anti-blind, we should be fine. Uh, this group we just completely demolished. This group, same thing, if I just equip anti-blind, because they're just blinding our initial attacks, which would kill. Uh, so if I just put like anti-blind on this, which I could drop the lucky coin for, just an item that gives uh, blindness immunity. So it's, it's not like it's an inflexible build. Like you can drop the crowns and the bracelets and you can drop Lucky Coin, and the rest, I would say Wyvern Reigns and Plume are necessary, but this can be replaced. I like it for the initiative, like look at that initiative right now. Uh, but Wyvern Reigns, Angel Plume, 
And then for this, the entire angel loadout is optional. Uh, I, like forging this, I think makes a lot of sense because you get accuracy and evasion. Now the accuracy doesn't matter uh, for normal attacks. It matters for wide pursuit. That's why I have it actually is for wide pursuit. Uh, but otherwise, like this is a true strike if you're buffed, right? And you're going to be buffed and nothing is going to drain all of your buffs because you have so many sources of buffs that they just can't keep up unless it's like PvP. So like Wingline Standard is turn one, turn zero buff before anyone does anything. Tailwind, another buff. And then uh, Gambler Coin, another buff. And it's a row buff because it's dirty Gambler Coin. So that's the, that's the setup. So you don't have to run crowns. You don't have to run the outlaw bracelet. Those can be dropped for utility items. And then lucky coin, I could I would say, could be dropped. And all the weapons and shields can be switched out. But the key thing is like Wyvern Reigns, Angel Plume, uh, Wingline Standard, and then uh, Dirty Gambler coin. And whatever units you want to run with this setup, completely up to you. Even feel free to optimize this setup. Uh, but against most things, especially things that don't blind us, we basically just kill everything, which is pretty good because this is like, we barely don't kill that. Uh, it's like a team of like rando things <laughs> i'm pretty proud of this i was uh we were like going somewhere uh for the for like a day or whatever in the car so like i was i was theory crafting this on the highway while in the passenger seat of course i was not driving uh, but it works on like most things you could probably min max like to get your kills right it kills pretty much everything on this map so i would say this is a pretty good build also it was beating arena I was just having it fight arena things, uh, not online, just like in general, and it was doing just fine killing most things. So like the thing that with the wide pursuit, like do you need the wide pursuit? I don't think you do. I just like it because it's cool. You could totally just run something else. You could even go for multiple hone slashes. So you could do like something like anti-blind. Uh, so let's say we want to get rid of like the wide pursuit thing. Uh, you could even run this if you've beaten the game, uh, but let's assume you haven't beaten the game. Uh, you could run like a blindness immune shield and then you could run like a ruby now you have two hone strikes which is pretty sick uh, i don't recommend running discharge because it consumes some pretty powerful buffs you can do this and it still counts as a buff for when you hone slash uh, you could run this this is fine for passive points i think the idea behind the wide pursuit was that i just wanted something to like front stack more damage with so wide pursuit like if i row attack you and it doesn't kill and then i wide pursuit you can wide pursuit with both with each unit too so like if the row attack does not kill you have two wide pursuits coming in immediately afterwards and one of those is going to kill and the damage on them was actually quite high when you uh, strength boost all right for the angels themselves offensive offensive uh, offensive go getter offensive offensive uh, this can be whatever. And this one, I have him on hardy hardy. He's just always like really tanky. And that's it. Because he's going to be blocking for people. Like, if things go wrong, basically. But they shouldn't go wrong. Now you could replace him. You could replace... I don't know that you could replace the shaman. I feel like you need the, the debuff here. But what else? I think that's pretty much the build. All right. So if you want to replace this. So now she's blindness immune. So that she can fight in the blindness. She can now do two hone slashes. And the nice thing about this situation, or the setup, if you sequence this correctly, so that she doesn't waste it, because this hits the whole front row, uh, you can get multiple gambler, or dirty coins, on each hone slash, if you have two, for example. Uh, you also have things like single hit shield smite, which is nice. Uh, this, when these are buffed with wingline standard, this actually does a lot of damage. Like, if they're buffed with uh, just wingline standard with this build right now, they will actually hit for reasonably good damage against enemy backliners and typically one-shot them. So you can get away with quite a few things here, but you could run whatever utility uh, with this. Now, the thing is though, you don't really have, like you're not really leveraging your passive points at all. So like I was trying to find, so I liked running, I mean, I guess you could try impetusing something. You could have one impetus the other. I don't know that you should, you should impetus in this build. <laughs> it's kind of a waste. Uh, what else can we do? Get Blade Dan? Oh no, that's stupid. <laughs> it's, it's too, like, slow. You want something quicker. You could just do, like, a Liberator's Pursuit, too. Uh, just to remove... You could have, like, a Liberator's one. So they can pull buffs off of things. Now, most enemies aren't going to be fast enough to get buffs off. 
Uh, and then also you could switch Ruby for the um, the Amethyst if you want like a mixed. So then you do like a Hone Slash with the Gambler's Coin into like a Shield Smite, just like last hit or a Spiral Sword. But by the time things are dead, you're gonna wanna, you're gonna prefer Shield Smite for the debuff. It does more damage with the next hit, so you can set up someone with a kill. Uh, but something like this for single targets, and then this one could also duplicate that. Uh, actually, we could probably get away with <laughs> dropping this for the crown again, because you get more damage. So you have two pursuits, and then you have crown, and then in this case, you could drop this. If you want to just do like a smaller pursuit, you can buy more liberators. I think there's up to like two. So like you could have like multiple different pursuits. So you, both of these would pursuit uh, either the same target or different targets based on what gets hit. And you can also change their pursuit too, right? Uh, so you could do like HP, like enemy HP uh, lowest, for example. And if it's a row attack, they will target whichever one is the rowest of legal targets. So you can actually change their pursuits for single hit, which is pretty interesting. Uh, but you can just do like normal pursuits or the wide pursuit. The wide pursuit's nice because it can turn a single attack. So like, let's say uh, this one to hone, this one hone slashes and kills one of the backliners. Actually, if it kills, I don't think you can pursuit off of that. So maybe there's there's negative synergy when you kill off of a pursuit. But if you do a row attack and kill like one, you can wide pursuit off of that because it still hit other things that you can pursuit into. But for the wide pursuit, very often, especially if something blocks. Now this shaman gets around blockers too with the defensive curse. It, it inflicts a guard seal, which is very useful. So things cannot like cover and guard from the front, which allows the griffin to typically just kill whatever it attacks. So some of this stuff is completely overkill. And honestly, if you find a way to make their passive points more valuable, that's probably better than the pursuit. But the pursuit is pretty decent in some bad matchups. And of course you can switch shields to anti-blind shield. And then for the griffin, you can just drop lucky coin for like a lantern or something. And then you will not be blinded. Actually, let's just check to see. Let's find a lantern for the griffin. Just see how they fight into angel matchup. All right, and then you will put on the same shield. Luminous shield times two. And then let's switch pursuit. Let's go back to wide pursuit. The wide pursuit's nice. It just does huge damage. And it can roll individual crits, right? So like double wide pursuit. It's, it front loads your damage. So if a fight's longer, the single pursuit may be better. But if the fight is quick, the damage from wide pursuit could be huge. All right, now we have anti-blind. All right, that's much better. So now we almost kill the boss and I could probably change tactics slightly, whereas before we barely did anything. And then this group we now kill. So all you have to do against these uh, feather bows is just equip anti-blind stuff and you will be fine. And also you can see that it doesn't really change too much of our performance. We're still killing or almost killing every group except for maybe like a boss group and this group here, which has a bunch of tanks. So that's not bad. Oh uh, yeah, that's it for this one. It's a pretty fun team. I had a pretty good time theory crafting this. I really wanted to get Hone Slash working and I knew I needed some kind of like row cleave and the row cleave can be anything, but it really combos well here because Wingline Standard also buffs your row cleave. 20% crit rate and 20% attack is not a joke, especially when you're running uh, Gambler's Coin by default. And then you can switch off of Gambler's Coin. And you also could run uh, Crit Axe. Let's see if there is one. Like there, that's Guard Raid, sorry. Should be a Crit Axe around here. I'm just looking at the stats. Is there not a Crit Axe? Is there really? I mean, I know there's black iron, but surely there's an axe with high crit rate. If not, that sucks. <laughs> uh, there are other things you can do too. Uh, you could drop the wyvern reins. And if you want to be a little bit crazy, you could do sniper lens to get amber sniper lens to get the true strike crit. So that way when you do crits, if you're gambler coined, it does an insane amount of damage. Uh, but this is more than enough. This is usually overkill as it is. Uh, but yeah, that's it for this one. Definitely like and subscribe if you enjoyed this team comp. Feel free to use this if you want to. Uh, just note that you will want to give these strength boosters so that their damage is good. The other stats kind of matter, but so like, you don't have to use Dewars of Illusion on them. You can just use strength boosters, which you can get from Angel Shop for two Divine Shards each. Uh, or you can get the Arena 
uh, for 20 Colosseum coins, you can get a Strength Booster. And you only can use up to five total anyways. Dudes of Illusions and Strength Boosters and Knowledge things do not stack. Like, you can use Strength and Knowledge to get plus five on each of those. But if you try to do those stats afterwards, it does not increase them. So it's something to know. That's useful. Uh, but yeah, peace.